everyone. Uh, my name is Rita. I'm co-editor in chief of Grain of Salt Mag, and I'm so excited to be here with Kaylee Spivey today, which I said right this time. Last time I remember I said it incorrectly, but I've learned. You are not the only one. You are not the only one. It is okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I make pop music. Hello. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Do you want to just tell, you know, if this is the first time that, you know, someone's stumbling upon who you are, um, just like who you are, where you're from, how long you've been doing this for, just like a background maybe? Okay, hi, uh, yeah, I'm Kaylee Spivey. Uh, I'm a queer pop artist. Uh, I've been doing this for, I think five years now, but I just started doing it under my own name. I used to be in an indie band called Small Talks. And yeah, that, that's that's the summary for what I do really. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So the last time we talked, um, you had just dropped SFU, So Fucked Up. Yes. Um, and we chatted about that single. We talked about, you know, what releasing a single under your own name really meant for you. Uh, the first time really embracing your creativity and like ownership of like, you know, being a queer music artist. Um, but you've been a, up to a lot since then. So what have you been doing? What I know you've, you've dropped a couple of songs. Um, what's been going on for you? Uh, I'm actually working on an EP. It's my first EP. Um, we have a song coming out very, very soon, two of them. It's lined up already. Um, the EP that we're working on, I'm really excited about because it's very focused on, weirdly, my feminine qualities, which is odd, but it has a lot of feminine energy. It's odd for me, I should add, because I'm typically more comfortable, I don't know, resonating with my masculine side. Like, I like to feel kind of like I don't know, whatever you describe masculine as. For me, I guess it would be like tough, centered, casual, and feminine is like pretty and sweet and, and powerful at the same time, but in a way that's like, I don't know, like magnetizing, but it, there's a lot of energy in that EP that we're working on. And it's very mature. It's one of the more mature sounding pieces of music I've ever made. So I'm just really excited to get it out there. But before that, we have two more singles. So M lots of writing. <laughs> That's so exciting. So I'm, I'm curious now that you mentioned that it was it purposeful that you're deciding to touch into this more feminine inside of yourself or did it just naturally come out and like what do those elements kind of look like if you don't want to spoil anything. No, it's, fine. it's fine. Um, so for me, a lot of my writing like very genuinely reflects whatever I'm dealing with in my life. I'm sometimes a storyteller, but most of the time I tell from my own stories. So in this past like year and a half, I've been kind of exploring my gender in a way, like not so, I don't, I wouldn't say that, um, I, for me, I've always asked when people say like, what are your pronouns? I always kind of say any, because I'm kind of in this state where I really feel like I'm figuring myself out, but I, I've been exploring all these aspects of gender and my expression of self and the clothing that I wear and things like that and what makes me feel most comfortable in my body and I think that just kind of came out in my music too this like exploration of like growing up like as a woman and as a queer woman especially and now as somebody who has always like I've been a woman but I don't know if I like I'm always perfectly summed up with just saying like she her you know so I'm, I'm just exploring all these things and it's reflecting in the music and I just I'm, I'm happy to I don't know, discover more through the songs. Definitely. And I feel like that's something that I just literally got off of TikTok. And I saw a TikTok about this, about, you know, someone going into, you know, COVID and the pandemic, identifying as one thing and now coming out on the other side, identifying something totally different. And it's been interesting to see people, you know, this has been such an awful year for so many. Um, but there's also been a lot of self-discovery and reflection that people have gotten out of it. Yeah. Do you think you would have had the space to kind of explore these other parts of yourself if it weren't for the pandemic? How much has that shaped, it, shaped this? Or are there other spaces that you've been a part of that have allowed you to kind of um, try to explore yourself in this, in this new way? You know, I think it really does have a lot to do with the pandemic because it is also very heavily influenced by my social media presence, which changed drastically during the pandemic because of TikTok. Um, seeing TikTok videos of like younger people, like teenagers and stuff kind of doing things that when I was in high school would have been like shocking in the best way. Like for me, I would have been like, you're doing that. You're like doing the thing, but like, everyone else might have like raised an eyebrow or something. Cause I also want to add that I'm from South Carolina. That's a very like conservative 
state. So there's not a lot of queer culture around here. And if it is, it's very, we kind of hide because it's, it's rough out here, I suppose. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think TikTok really inspired it because I see a lot of young people exploring their gender, exploring their gender expression, exploring their style, like exploring so many things. And I just was inspired by that. And now I wanted to start like, you know, thinking about that for myself. I never have. And I never have, well, I never thought about it that way, I guess. And now I'm like, this is cool. Like, fem like feminine means something so different than it used to. Like, I guess when I was growing up, I believed it meant kind of negative things, but I, that's only because I was taught that, you know, I was taught like, you know, if you're feminine, you're, or if you're like a woman, you're delicate and you need to be like very soft and sweet and stuff. You can't be powerful and sweet, or you can't have these contradictions. And that's kind of what I'm exploring now is just the fact that that's a lie. And it's like, I always knew that, but it's, it's just cool to see it finally being expressed, I guess. Mm -hmm that's, that would be the thing. Yeah. And I think even just in terms of presentation too, like, I know I have long hair now, but at one point in my life, I had a pixie cut, like I, I cut my hair off and it was something that I remember particularly my sister had like such a hard time understanding. She was like, your, your hair's so short, like a boy. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I identify as a girl and I'm, I'm comfortable with that identity, but like, I just wanted a short haircut because I wanted it to. And it, you know, we draw these lines uh, so distinctly and we don't really need to. And I think this has been a great time for people to really be playful with identity and like really test things out, which has been super unique. Um, I, don't, I feel like for everyone has been, um, a, you know, a positive side of this whole experience. Yeah, um, especially with social media, like people yeah. can create their own spaces. Like, cause exactly. I guess that's what I meant. Like in South Carolina, we don't have space like queer spaces really and if we do I'm pretty out and I haven't found them so I have no idea where they are but we don't have a lot of queer spaces and social media gave us an opportunity in that isolation to create spaces for like ourselves even though it may be digital it's still a it's place so where you feel safe yeah yeah exactly yeah. and I think what's really interesting just about like you being in this particular space too is that you know you've per tried to cultivate a space where people can think about sexuality because um, you've been so open about that and making music specifically or not specifically but just that does cater to like a queer perspective and mm -hmm. being queer and falling in love um, so not only have you created that space but now like you're able to participate in it in a way and like kind of reproduce it which I think is very fun like I think that is so I think that's just awesome. I think that's really cool. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like not only for the, your audience, but like for yourself as well. So that's cool. yeah. very fun. Um, and I know you've had, you know, other singles come out since, since we've chatted. So I thought we'd talk about those. Um, so the singles being, you know, of course, you know, not over you yet <laughs> and cross the line. I got yeah. nervous. I was like, I wonder if she's going to remember them. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm going to remember them. I listened to them. I like them. Um, so I thought we'd, I, Not Over You Yet was the one that came out first, right? Before mm -hmm. Cross Line, yeah. So I thought we'd just start there. Um, if you wanted to tell me a little bit about the song, the story behind it, how it kind of came to be. So I am very transparent about this. And that's kind of what's, a, it's like slightly embarrassing because I'm so transparent, but I'm not going to like make up a story. So I'm just going to tell you. Uh, not Over You Yet was written a while ago like it honestly is about I think it's about two years old now so it was actually older than older than like that's the thing about music sometimes the songs come out way later than you had written them so I'm not technically in that headspace anymore at all but I I still consider it a proper reflection of what I was thinking about at that time so I was in a relationship with somebody who was like halfway across the country very queer culture right there but um I was in a relationship with them. I was very, very invested. And I got, I was dating them. Like we had a title and everything. And then one day they just absolutely like disappeared from my life on my birthday. I had turned 21 and they just like stopped replying to my text. All of a sudden they didn't answer my calls. Like they didn't break up with me. They didn't say why. They didn't give me a single reason. They literally went from being present, being my partner to just being gone. And 
I was basically like kind of trumped and they were, they were still fine. Like, you know, I saw them posting online. Like it literally just like they erased me from their life with no word. And I was so kind of like traumatized by that for a while that it influenced a lot of my songwriting. Like SFU is a song about being in a relationship and like being so invested in a person who is really not returning that and then kind of about the feelings of like still not wanting to be out of it even when they had left I was like I still want you back even though you literally just disappeared from my life I still want you back and it was kind of a reflection of that almost how sad of a state of mind I was in where I was just so attached to that person and that's why it's so fucked up because I know it's fucked up like this is how I'm feeling and then not over you yet is kind of a, like a sequel to that where it's like I'm getting to this point where I'm just like owning that I'm not over you and then we move on to the next single, Cross the Line. And it kind of also ties in, but this one separates and becomes more about communication. The communication I wish that we had had, but we did not. Awesome, awesome. I really loved, well, well okay, I'll go back to Cross the Line in a bit, focus on Not Over You, because I have so much to say about Cross the Line. Um, but Not Over You yet specifically, I think, you know, coming from that story that's like one of pain and then creating honestly it's a fun song like listening <laughs> to it like you hear it and you know I want to dance around my room but also like in a sad way but also in a fun way it's just I think that you know being able to like be an artist and um take something that is so sad and then kind of twist it in a way that can you know be interpreted in multiple ways by an audience and like create it into different experiences is very hard to do and very, very unique. And I also really like the music video for, for this song specifically. Um, and I really liked the style of it and how, you know, these were like very personally filmed clips that were like made it feel like homemade. And like, we stepped into your world in a way, like we, we went into your own headspace with you. Um, so I was just wondering about like if that was intentional or just the creative process behind the video in particular because it just seemed like a lot of fun to do. Yeah, Not Over You Yet was very interesting because it really was shot all by myself. I had, um, I think I had one of my close friends with me and then the owner of the house that we shot it at because we used a friend's house. Like we just literally like took so much stuff off of their walls and like redid the house to have this like minimalistic vibe but that also kind of still felt like home but I wanted I absolutely wanted it to be intimate I wanted it to feel like they were going through the healing process with me and I wanted it to feel isolated because we were also going through quarantine at this time so that was part of the reason it was filmed just by me is because we couldn't have a big crew we couldn't have a bunch of people we couldn't travel we couldn't go anywhere we had to work with the resources that we had so I had a friend basically mail me their 90s camcorder and we shot all these clips and I kind of literally just tried to recreate what I was going through in a more like I would say almost I would say less emotional way but kind of lighthearted, more entertainment based but show people what it felt like when I was processing everything in that time period like and the tally marks is kind of the most important part for me because I kept trying to put a timeline to it and like, be like, I'll get over this at this point, or I'll be over this at this point, or, you know, I've done good for three days. I haven't even thought about the person. And then like a day later, I'm all sad again. And I, I wanted to put that tally there because it was the, it was kind of like just a big sign. It's like, you can't, you cannot tally this up. Like there's no end to it. That's why it starts like slow. And then at the end, just the whole canvas is just covered because it's like, there's just no way to make this quick you know healing isn't linear and that was the whole idea of not over you yet's video and also just kind of getting personal with people and showing them like you know even though you are like feeling this way and you're going through something like it's part of the journey like you're not you're not gonna always be this like this way I wanted to feel like you're moving you know you're moving through it instead of feeling stuck into it that's also kind of why the dancing was there and a lot of the movement and the writing scenes I spent so much time journaling about my feelings during this period because I couldn't talk to the person, like there was no communication. So it was like all me trying to process something completely alone with no no closure and no reason. I think that, and the point you brought up about the 
the isolation aspect of it. Like that's something I got from it that I didn't know how to verbalize. And I think that, I don't know, the way you put that was like perfect. And I encourage everyone to go watch the music video because I think you'll really get it. Um, you know, like it seems like we were kind of like standing in the corner, just like watching you go through this. Like we were invited to the party, but like at a, like a specific, there's a specific way we could interact with it. And it was just kind of like being a spectator almost and just like watching you go through it. And in that way, kind of helping us go through our own stages of grief and like understanding that, you know, maybe it's not a relationship where there's someone halfway across the country decides to randomly disappear, but like, you know, healing does take time. Um, and, you know, you might feel like you made progress and then you all of a sudden you end up back at square one. Um, and I, did also love the tallies for that specific reason too. Like you like in terms of like when I know like I'm processing things, it's like, okay, like how many days can I go by without really being affected by it? And then I'm so hard on myself when like I, I end up in a space that's like bad again. Um, yeah. So I really like identify with that kind of thing. And I think just un like knowing that other people experience pain that way too it's just like a very human thing that we all go through and that we can like we should talk about how like pain and grief aren't like linear like you can it's it's a process and it's different for everyone and it doesn't have to be like as neat as we would like it to be yeah That's confidence <laughs> knowing your pain I that was another big thing I wanted to say like because a lot of people make you feel bad about it like or it seems like there's this pressure to just get over it like stop being sad like stop being this person but it's like I just feel like that's really unfair because there's a lot of people who can't just like make their feelings go away and there's not and it seems really embarrassing to admit but it's like why would you lie about it like it's just so human like you know like you sometimes you just can't get over people like that that quick and like that's why I was kind of just trying to make it fun because it's like so what, you know, I feel this, so what? That's kind of what I was trying to do with it. And it came across very, very well. I loved it. And like the bath, the bathtub scenes, I felt like those were like so playful. So it was like, here's something really heavy, but also something to enjoy. Um, so it was a really good music video. Um, and while that one, I feel like it was definitely more serious, but also had that, you know, light kind of uh, tone to it. Then we go to Cross the Line, well, uh, which is more, I think maybe for me personally as a listener, just more mel melancholy and like a more reflective kind of feeling. Um, so I know you talked about it a little bit, but if there's anything else you kind of just want to add in, uh, wanted to add to just, uh, you know, what the song is about, what it means to you, if there are any other interpretations that come from it. Yes, I would say it's mostly about communication because it is, that song is absolutely reflective. That would be the best word for it because and the video is supposed to like feel that way as well. Like I'm just going through all these memories with this person and I can't like, I'm in that middle of processing it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what went wrong and if the relationship is even like savable, you know, like, can we salvage this at all? Is it worth it? So kind of just being like, we're in this really crazy boat. And I wanted to also put out something really like mature and high quality because we had just done Not Over You yet. And it was so the opposite, it was fun playful, lighthearted, but it was on a 90s camcorder, which is great it has its own reason that I used it. But I really wanted to put something that was crispy and clear. And it was also a fun fact, my first time ever actually displaying a queer relationship in a video, which was huge for me because I literally filmed a video with Small Talks, which is my old uh, band project. And I had a, a co-star for Quiet Sounds who was female and I told the director literally to film it in an androgynous way, like film it so that you cannot tell this person's identity and you cannot tell really what gender they specifically are. So I want it to be open, you know, so that, and my reasoning was like, I want anybody to be able to relate to it. Like, I don't want to kind of put my sexuality on it. And then again, like something completely flipped in me recently when I came out with my name and owned all these things about myself. I also owned and realized that like my sexuality does, like people wanna say all the time, like, why does it matter? Why talk about your sexuality? It influences so many aspects of my life, like being a queer person, like, cause I, you know, of trauma growing up, you know, that changes your 
personality, the way you interact with people because of the things that are thrown at you, like you're going to hell for this or you're doing this or whatever, blah, 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 blah. You're made to feel bad and wrong. And you know, that changes you, that changes the way you develop, that changes the way you grow up. Um, and I think really, I was just terrified of like owning that. And now like this video was like a big punch to my like younger self and being like, no, like this is who you are and it's fine. Like you should be this person because right now more than anything, that's what you needed then. And that's what you want to see now, like authentic representation, not like, I don't know, walking on glass representation. Like I'm afraid to offend people because you know, people would tell me all the time, like, what does it have to do with your music? It's like actually a lot, like a lot. I mean, I always make this reference, but WAP, um, WAP is literally completely about straight sex. <laughs> and like, I, I mean, Ariana Grande is like, most of her songs are very like spoken about like sexuality and sensuality, but it's like when it's queer, like, oh, you're making it about your sexuality. And it's like, I'm writing a love song about a woman and I put a woman in the video and you're gonna throw that at me, but then you have artists like Ariana Grande, who are great, by the way, there's nothing wrong with this. I'm just saying this is the same thing, but for some reason, when you say it's queer, people get up in arms about it. There's no other reason than homophobia. Like, there's no other reason. I was hoping we would talk about that music video and like your choice to put, you know, a, a female or just identifying person in that place. Cause that's something I noticed too. Cause I remember like watching your other music videos and it be more of like a question mark um, or like a space that the audience could kind of fill. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, it fits so perfectly with this song too, because I feel like this in, well, on my interpretation of it, it's mo more overtly queer too. Like the, the love that you're singing about in this song is queer love like I just really and I know like there's you know your interpretation of it but when I listen to it I have like a different version and I'm listening to the lyrics specifically like it's it's hard for me to tell you how you feel can we turn this into something real and like I'm I'm thinking of it as like two people that maybe kind of be questioning their sexuality and not know if they should cross the line yeah and accept it and create that relationship and understand it for what it is um, and like go into the unknown almost on their identities and who they are as people. So that's what I kind of got out of it for that. And I think that, you know, it, there was obviously like a yearning within this song and I, okay. yeah. And then this, you know, yearning is such an important part of the queer experience. And this is something that at Grain of Salt, we've been talking about because one of our residents is writing an article about it um, and just like what yearning kind of means to the queer community. And so having that in the song, just like put it in your face, like she's writing about queer love. Like this is what her audience and this is who it's for. And then seeing that reinforced in the music video, I think was just so special. Um, and I love like that was the first music video to kind of like do that because I think, you know, it just, I think it was just like a beautiful kind of, you know, package, like all together wrapped in a bow. Um, I, I thought a funny, one. funny one for you. Call me by your name. Those are the books that we used in that scene where we're upside down and we're holding books. And I cannot name a better queer yearning romance book ever besides Call Me By Your Name. That whole book is yearning, like that entire book is. And it, it's really funny that you talk about that because we constantly talked about that during the film. We were like, I want this to punch people. Like, so I want them to really feel the passion behind it because there's a certain intensity to taking that leap like you're talking about, crossing the line, being brave, being able to come out because you know you're gonna get backlash. Like, you know, I, I don't think like a heterosexual relationship would worry about that like nobody's gonna tell you you're going to hell for who you love or try to fight you or even kill you like I'm not gonna forget about other countries where that literally happens um but you know like that's that's part of it you're facing a lot of fear and you're being really really brave to to be who you are and there is a lot of yearning in that like a lot of hoping for freedom that connection that you feel so kind of starved from because of social pressure exactly exactly and I think that book is Perfect. I didn't even notice that. And I'm as like a little Easter egg. I'm glad I know that now because that is such like an important, I think, book in terms of just like culture. <laughs> just It's my favorite. It's, it is a great book. I love it too. Um, and the movie is great too. Um, what was the response like 
from this video. Did anyone, did you receive any negative backlash from it being so overtly queer coded? Not even queer coded, it's just queer at this point. Like that's not coded. Um, yeah, what, what did you hear back from people? I don't think I received any backlash, to be honest. I was kind of surprised because I really expected at least a couple people to kind of troll the video, maybe like down it just because or comment something like really trolly, but nobody has done that yet. I think that's because it hasn't reached out of uh, my queer space yet. I think like, for example, like SFU has kind of reached the most people out of all my songs. So I think maybe when Cross the Line pushes out more, I could receive backlash, but right now it's very safe. It's very protected. The The comment section is really good. I have, weirdly, there's not a single dislike on it, which I check like every other now and then. Cause I'm like, I know somebody's gotta dislike it. Cause that just happens. Like it doesn't even mean, like it just, people just do that. Like it doesn't even always have to mean something. People just do that. So I'm like, I'm just shocked watching it. And I don't know, it, it's just weird. I'm sure it'll happen, but it has not happened yet. <laughs> love to hear that um and in terms of like actually making the music video did you have I know like in the last one like it was it was you filming yourself basically <laughs> and setting that up and but with this one did you have a larger team was it you know did you kind of instruct it and direct it in the way you wanted to or did other people come with ideas how how did that work so it was a pretty fair mix, I would say. Um, I had four people there total, and one of them was me. So me, my co-star Vic, um, who also makes music. Her artist name is Zoe on Venus. She is also queer, so if that interests anybody, you know, she's out there. She's making music fresh, new. Um, and then Alex Wolf, who was the director and editor of Not Over You Yet. And then my friend Jax Garcia, who took the uh, behind the scenes and was there assisting and helping basically with everything. So when we did that video, I was shocked that we did it with four people, to be honest. Like that's a very, very, very small team. And there was a lot of work behind it. We actually took like a week to shoot that because we had to do so much with only four people. And we also had to figure out the rain room. We had to go to New York to get the studio. And we were working through like, like it was getting to a point where it's like, you know, it's just like, we had to be very, very careful, like very, very, very careful and very, very, I don't know, resourceful, if that makes sense. Cause we had to follow a lot of uh, COVID guidelines and we had to all take tests and take tests when we got there, take tests when we left, take tests all the time basically and make sure we're safe and doing everything we can to not be a part of, you know, anything spreading or an issue or anything but yeah I I mean I'm most of it came up out of my own head like the shot there's a shot where I am in the bed and the it just drops down into the rain like straight from the bed shot into the rain room like that shot was completely made up by me I wrote that down I sent a lot of them to Alex Pryor I was like I want this shot the book scene where our feet are up I literally picked out the place where we shot that and matched it up exactly with something that I like had in mind and had pictured already of the feet upside down I had to make sure the windows looked the same I had to make sure a lot of things were like exactly division but that really kind of came out of my own head except Alex met me perfectly half halfway and really took care of making it abstract and beautiful and making sure the cinematography aspects were there and um, helped direct me and the co-star Vic to kind of get the best chemistry out of us. So it, it was very like teamwork, but it definitely, definitely came out of my head, a lot of the shots and everything like that. That's super cool. That's super fun. I can't even imagine like how much work that takes like I like it was a beautifully shot music video and like you see the difference between like the styles too um with not over you yet and cross the line I could not even imagine doing all that work with four people that's insane um you gotta think about those lights those lights we have to carry around and everything and then we have to get dressed and style ourselves and do our hair and makeup and, <laughs> and like Alex has to Alex really had the craziest job Alex and Jax both because Jax was Alex's assistant but you know Alex has to set up the tripods and the camera and do the camera settings and make sure the batteries are charged and everybody's dressed on time and that we don't miss sunlight and we had to shoot during like certain like times of the day has everyone ate etc cetera, etc cetera. it's just like a whole thing that's so complicated but it came out amazing um, yeah. that was a great video um 
in general, I know we talked about fan reception a bit with that music video, but, um, you know, with including like SFU, because it was just the beginning when you, when you released that the last time we talked, um, what did you hear back from fans from that, that music, um, for all three of them, really, um, what kind of like has the reception been what have people been identifying with um I'm just interested to see if like you know what you envisioned the reception to be is actually what people got out of it or like if there's anything else that they kind of find that they found like were in between the lines or anything like that they tied the videos together that was something I didn't expect to happen but they were able to tie the videos together which is really really cool because there's a clip where I am upside down and not over you yet and I'm writing alone. And then there's the clip where I'm reading the book with like my co-star and they paired those together. And I thought that was really cool because they're kind of making their own story because to be honest, I didn't think about that at all. That was not something that was in my head. Um, it just, that makes sense. It's a beautiful little escalation and they kind of put that together. The main thing I think that they're identifying with really is just how outspoken I am about my sexuality. They love the representation, the expression of that. I can tell that's really resonating with people. Um, I think they obviously enjoy the music for what it is, but I think that what really just kind of, for any artist, I think this, at least this is how I enjoy music. Like I, you can show me a great song and I'm like, that's a great song, but I'm, I don't really like invest in it or like care about it much until it reaches me on a personal level. And I think that I'm reaching a lot of people by just kind of being like exactly what I needed when I was a kid, like exactly what I needed when I was a kid. And a lot of young people really, really tell me that they really care about that. And that means a lot to me. And then I think, I think the response has been really, really great. I, I kind of like had blown up expectations, which sounds really stupid, but like I watched so many people on TikTok just like throw up a song and it just, millions of streams, billboard, like craziness and like seconds. And I was kind of expecting the same for like SFU and that didn't happen. Like it's kind of been a slower journey, but uh, not slow in like an ungrateful way. Cause it's been way faster than I expected. And sometime, somehow at the same time, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not on billboard overnight. Like, and I, I don't know why. I think I was just really excited. Like I was just really excited and I think I got a little caught up in trying to just rush the journey when truthfully I'm still in a very early stage of my career and discovering what kind of music I even want to make like how my sound is going to develop over time like this new EP has already changed so much like it's so much more mature and developed and full like I don't know it just sounds so much fuller the lyrics are way more in depth which I appreciate because my last couple songs I was kind of trying to keep it very um, I don't know, one liner E, like I wanted it to just kind of be like, this is catchy, this is great. I can kind of fill in the blanks myself as a listener. Where this next EP, I'm really kind of like feeling very specific. Like, this is my truth. Here it is. It sounds great. It's in this packaged, beautiful, mature pop music. It sounds really, I don't know, pretty, but yeah, I think I think the response has been way more than I expected and somehow also not <laughs> I don't I don't know well I'm very excited to hear that about the, the EP because that's something that you know like as a, a fan like I would love to see you do because I, I feel like yeah like it they've been very catchy but like getting more into it with you and like intimate wow that sounded similar um <laughs> would be like just like a perfect kind of path to go into and I know like you enjoy other forms of art as well and like writing and painting um and I don't know if there's ways that like I know like naturally writing is just involved in in lyrics and stuff but like seeing you tap into like creative different creative outlets would be fun um yeah. so I'm looking forward to that in terms of like the sound of it is it going to be is it not going to be pop anymore is it going to sound different or is it just kind of like I don't know a, a mix a mix and ma match of like everything you're kind of into I would say if you could get Harry Styles and turn him into me <laughs> that would be it <laughs> honestly it's it's still very pop it still has that bedroom pop quality but there's more live instruments to it now like there's a bit more maturity it's like groovier um, 
it's just, it's not as like punch your face catchy, you know, it's super catchy, but it's like, there's more to digest now. Like, it's not so much of like a easy listening experience where you're, you just get it very quickly. It's like, you're going to listen to it and kind of have to be like, whoa, wait, what was that? Like, what was that sound? Dang, that's clean. You know, that kind of stuff. It's just, it just, it sounds, it's, it's very mature and groovy and there's just more live band elements than I would have said would have been in there in the first couple of songs. It's closer to cross the line, but if you made it like very lush and like happy and like groovy. Summer was the main thing I had in mind when I was writing it and still am writing it. So summer is the vibe, very sun, sunny windows down kind of thing. That's perfect. We all need a soundtrack for the summer. So keep that in mind. Um, and in terms of, you know, you talked about how you are a storyteller. Um, are there, are you still following that with this, this EP? Are you still tapping into those stories or are you, you know, you said you mentioned you were reflecting on like the femininity and stuff. So is it more reflective or is there still like kind of like a core source? Um, what, what's the vibes? <laughs> so I find people have been wanting this song forever and they already know about it because I posted it on TikTok so I can talk about this, but there's a song on the EP called More Than Friendly. And I already leaked it on TikTok, at least 30 seconds of it, like a demo that I made. And it was just the demo. And that song is literally the story of how I found out of my sexuality by crushing on my best friend when I was a kid. And I think that th that's a story. That's definitely a story. I tell it kind of just like, I don't know. This is, I guess this is a good one. So Sophia by Claro, people always talk about that being like a big, big, like queer icon song. So it kind of has a similar vibe where it's you're it's very much a yearning song, way more than cross the line, way more than cross the line, I would say. It's upbeat though, it's curious, it's sweet, it's kind of it's very innocent. Like it's kind of just like, you know, I have these feelings, but you know, we can be friends too. Like it's it's very like cute, you know. I I really like it. I can't wait for that one to come out. That one's very story. The rest are very like, I would say mood based. I, I wrote a lot about feelings I was having in specific moments and then went into detail about it. There's two songs. One of them though is just a story. Like uh, I, I kind of wrote it up. It's like a fantasy love story. It's a queer fantasy love story. <laughs> and then the other one is actually kind of um, very personal to me. I can't wait to show this one. I can't give this one away, but I'm telling you this one this one's very detailed. I went into some personal, I, I you know, I, I guess I would summarize it by saying, yeah, a lot of this is stories. I didn't think about it that way though. I always thought it to be more about moods, but to be honest, now that you ask, yeah, a lot of them really are stories. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Awesome, well, that's, I'm very excited. Um, have you announced when the first single's coming out or any, any details? Not yet. All right. So early. <laughs> You're like hearing about it so early. Like, honestly, I don't, I can't even imagine when it's going to come out. I hope like late summer, mid summer, but not yet. I still have two more songs before this EP even touches bass. So we'll see. <laughs> So great, I'm excited. Um, so yeah, I was gonna ask like, what are some projects that we can kind of look forward to, but I guess you've kind of laid it out for us. Um, I've also seen, been seeing um, some TikToks you've been posting about having like a label reach out to you. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that, like what fans can do to kind of support your journey. Um, yeah, what's that been about? So. Yes, um, my, my favorite major label, I, which is weird to say because you really think a lot of people are trying to avoid those these days. And in a way I am, but at the same time, I don't have tons, I'm one person. I don't have tons of funding and the ideas that I want to make cost a lot of money. Like I have huge productions in mind for my tours, for my live performances, for like interactions with fans, like stuff I want to do with fans. Like Youngblood is really inspiring to me as far as his interactions with fans, like the things that he does to go out of his way to like involve them. Like I want to do that. I just don't have the money. So in my mind, I've always kind of pictured like a big record label being a part of my team, like, you know, Taylor Swift level record label. I can hint that. That's a big drop right there. So anyway, she is, she has inspired me forever. And I, I just want, I want them to take, uh, they made an introduction 
which doesn't mean a lot in the music industry. It really just means that they're kind of trying to get me early, like they see potential and they just want to make sure that, you know, they've said hello so that if anyone else kind of tried to swoop in, they've kind of already made their like impression, you know, just talk to me. It doesn't mean a lot in the long run, but if I can get like a viral song and build up more momentum, I could totally see something working out with a major label. So hopefully just, you know, everybody can keep streaming and talking to their friends about me and I'll keep promoting on TikTok. And if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And if it's not, I'll keep doing my own thing. But I really, really want that major label money because I want to put it into huge things. Like I want to make insane, insane stuff. And I've never seen that. Like I've, I've seen like, you know, Lady Gaga is probably the closest. I feel like we talked about this last time. I don't know, but Lady Gaga is probably the closest mainstream queer artist besides Little Nas X, like recently, I hope I said the Nas part right. I think it's Nas, but Little Nas X besides him recently in his like huge video where he kind of smacked everyone in the face with queer culture, which was awesome by the way. Like that's the stuff I wanna do. I wanna bring that representation for like tomboys and like like masculine women and people who are queer or like the like feminine queer people. Like I just, I wanna be the voice for that. You know what I mean? Like I wanna be that. And I wanna do it with like tons of money and I wanna smack people in the face like Lil Nas X is doing. And I, I just know I would put it into good things. So hopefully I can be the artist that I wanna be one day. I'm, I'm growing into her every day. I was gonna say like you started talking about like your big plans I was like that's you know that's the point of it is like creating that space and you talked about you know you're in South Carolina and you don't really have that career space um and being able to now take you know your your digital presence and like put it in like a physical kind of community yes the real world like the real, real, world. The real world and that would just be like the perfect cherry on top um, and I think that's so cool because that's like something that, you know, queer people are always looking for, especially ones like in the South or people that are just unsure of sexuality in general, like that, that occurs everywhere. Um, yeah. Being able to just have a place they know they can go to. It's like as simple as that, like just knowing that they can go to somewhere if they need to. So that's really fun. Also, well, congratulations on that. And, you know, so everyone that's watching this better be going to stream SFU and cross the line and not over you yet um, as soon as this ends, which unfortunately is now, um, <laughs> just so I don't keep you on forever and ever. Um, but thank you so, so much for talking with me today. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grain of Salt. Thank you for everyone who's behind the scenes of Grain of Salt. And thank you for whoever edits or posts this video. I don't know, but thank you. And that will probably be the wonderful Mel. Um, so hello to Mel and thank you <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.